Not everyone approved of this sudden explosion of women on the public scene. Massachusetts merchant and conservative Peter Oliver described them as dupes of radical clergy. The dissenting clergy, he wrote, were set to work to preach up manufacturers instead of gospel. They preached about it until women and children, both within doors and without, set their spinning wheels a-whirling in defiance of Great Britain. But neither dismissal nor disapproval deterred the Daughters of Liberty. When, for example, critics attacked the propriety of the women who attended the spinning bees, three Boston matrons fired back their reply to the writers who they called little wits and foplings who had published their views in the Boston newspaper. <clears throat> Accused of being the inferior sex by these men, the women retorted, inferior in abuse of sarcasm, in personal invective, in low wit we glory to be, but inferior in veracity, honesty, sincerity, love of virtue, of liberty in our country we would not willingly be to any. That shut the little foplings up. Public statements in support of the boycotts as well as public acts became a vital part of the political repertoire of colonial women. In 1765, a determined group of New York City brides announced in the local newspaper that they would refuse to marry any fiancé who intended to seal their marriage certificates with any of the hated stamps. When the Townsend Acts of 1767 prompted a new round of boycotts, women made their protests public. The Boston Evening Post gleefully reported in 1770 upwards of 300 mistresses of families in which number the ladies of highest rank and influence had signed an agreement to abstain from drinking tea. Soon afterwards, almost 100 women of lower rank and influence produced their own document pledging, and this was what was so interesting and important, of their own free will and accord, in other words, not because our husbands told us to, to boycott British goods. And after the Tea Act of 1773 was passed, a group of influential Edenton, North Carolina women signed a pledge to refrain from tea and other English products, calling themselves the Edenton Ladies Patriotic Guild, they joined the boycott and they declared they were doing so not simply as the wives of patriot men, but as patriots in their own right. This radicalism shocked many American and English men. One English brother wrote to his brother in America, is there a female Congress in Edenton as well? There's a very famous uh, cartoon of the Edenton ladies meeting uh, against them, and it shows what happens when women get involved in politics. There's a baby drinking out of the dog's bowl, and all of the women now have hideous, ugly, masculine countenances, and this is what happens if you get involved in politics. <clears throat>